Welcome to Prayer Nation. Out of every nation, out of every tongue, out of every kindred, out of every culture, every creed, every color, God is drawing people to Him. His word says, if I be lifted up, John chapter 12, I will draw all men unto me. That cross is pulling us even now. All men means every kind of man. God is drawing us all. So this is Prayer Nation, and we welcome you. Thank you for joining us from wherever you might be joining us. Thank you for connecting with us, whether it's here in the local greater Houston area, whether it's in the United States and Canada, whether it's Central America, South America. We have people connecting with us from Europe, Middle East, way down under Australia, New Zealand, uh, Indonesia, the Philippines, all the way up through Singapore, Asia, Nagaland, India. They're connecting with us all over the world, and we are so thankful. Europe, of course, is a part of this. Every continent we have heard from, except Antarctica. We have not heard from Antarctica yes, yet, but who knows? They might be listening. <laughs> But we welcome you today, we're so thankful. I wanna give a, an overview of prophetic timelines and I want to talk about the difference between immediate Rima words and um, corporate Rima words. So when you use the term Rima, it's as opposed to logos. In the beginning was the logos. This is a Greek word. When you see it, the word word, in the beginning was the word. Logos is total plan. It is the entire knowledge of God. In Thayer's uh, Greek lexicon, it's a couple of pages long to describe what Logos is. In the beginning was the Logos. God had a complete plan, perfect plan, perfect pattern from the foundation of the world. He saw everything. He's God, he's beyond us. His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. As high as the heaven is above the earth, that's how high his ways are above our ways, his thoughts above our thoughts. We cannot grasp it because we are finite beings. But God is not finite, he is infinite. He is eternal. So eternity exists and time and space exists. So there is, uh, there is these parallel dimensions or parallel realms that are happening. God dwells in eternity, he inhabits eternity, and yet he came into time. So the word was God in time, God stepping into time. But so that we know that there was no difference between God in time and God in eternity, even though you could not get all of God into time and space because God lives outside of time and space as an eternal being and as an infinite being that has no limits. So the word was God in time, it was with God. It was with God. It was existing in, it was God existing in time and space while at the same time existing in eternity. But so there's no confusion between these two manifestations. He said, and the word was God. There's no difference between God in time and space and God in eternity. It's just a means by which we can interact with him. He uses his word. He did everything through his word. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Everything was made through him. Uh, Colossians 1 said he's the image of God. All things were made by him and for him, and by him all things consist. All things consist. They all things hold together. So this is that this is that broad overview of all the patterns of God, of all that God would do from the foundation of the world. It was all there. It was all there. So what a rima is, a rima is when God speaks a specific word, not just a general word, about a specific plan to a specific group or person at a specific time. So within the Greek text, you have words like chronos and kairos. Chronos is where you get like the word for a watch, uh, or a clock. It's just chronology, root word chronology, chronos. Just the counting of seconds, minutes, hours, days, weeks, years. Okay, we understand. Just the procession of time. But 
kairos is a, an appointed time. So God created time and space from the very beginning. And then he put a celestial clock in place, which tells time. He said that the sun, moon, and the stars would be for times and for seasons and for days and years. Time existed. The evening and the morning were the first day. Before there ever was a sun, moon, or stars, there was an evening and a morning. But God put those celestial things out there for us all to be able to observe and to set ourselves to them. And then our bodies have a biological clock that coincides. You see the ocean, the tide comes in and goes out. The rhythmic movements are all seen through heaven and earth, through the cosmos, through celestial and celestial working together. It's amazing how it's not a multiverse, but a universe. Everything intersects with everything else. And God has appointed times. He said there would be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. So there's appointed times, appointed seasons, and we are to learn this rhythm. And so the Spirit of God comes with what is called a rima. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. That word, word there is rima. So we have rima words that are specific. When Jesus was walking on the water, uh, Peter said, if that's you, bid me to come and walk on the water with you. And he says to Peter, come. He didn't say that to the other 12. That was a word only to Peter. And because it was his Rima word, he was able to walk on water with Jesus. The rest of them watched, observed. And then that story became Logos. The story became the written text where we learned the patterns of God from that text. But we cannot all walk on water because we didn't all get that Rima word. God will pull it out and he'll apply it now and it will be in a different way. We'll walk on a, on a problem. We'll walk on a circumstance. God will say, I'm speaking to you about this and then we'll be quickened with faith. Whenever there's a Rima word, there is faith to accomplish it that God gives it to us. Now, so there are words that have short time frames to them and then there are Rima words that have longer time frames. So what I'm interested in is the overviews of God. What is God saying in this season? What is not just God saying today, I want daily bread. We all need daily bread. But each one of us should be hearing from God on a daily basis. We should all be getting those little nudges and impressions and things that guide uh, all of our decisions that we're making. What is it, 70 decisions? Seven? I don't know. It's, it's a lot of decisions that we make every day. But... There are larger overarching themes that God is working on. And I want to understand what those are so that I can be effective in the kingdom of God. So here are three global prayer initiatives that the Lord spoke to me that would be in effect until he comes. These are three corporate remas. These are for the end time church. These are for the intercessors to pray. These are for us to bring into reality, to bring the prophetic into a provision, not just a promise, not just futuristic, but taking what God has said he would do someday and make it today, where that someday is now, where we're, we're bringing it into the present. And this is what faith does. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Hope is future. But it's the substance of what we're hoping for. It's the evidence of things not yet seen. Faith gives us that ability to, to take what is in the future, create a substance to give us something to hold on to, and then we bring it from the future into the present. That's what faith does. But we have to have that hope. We have to have that pattern. We have to see that prophetic insight. We have to have that that word there. So this is what this is what I'm, I'm we're, we're toggling between in prayer. We pray to see the future. God is in the future. Satan lives in the past and wants the past to be recycled. He looks at the future. He knows what the Bible says. He's trying to bring apart the parts that he likes, and he doesn't want the other parts to happen. He's trying to cancel out the parts that he doesn't like about him being defeated and thrown into the bottomless pit, and all of those things. So he's trying to use the principles that God gives us for faith, and he's trying to use faith against God. He has faith in faith. We don't have faith in faith. We have faith in God, and that's what makes the difference. We have faith in God's word. And so we are counteracting this demonic 
opposition. So we have all of these different components and then we have our own paradigms, our own mindsets, our own patterns that we're in, our own broken, dysfunctional, uh, generational curses that are recycling the dysfunction through the generations. So we're breaking through those things in prayer and we're reaching into the spirit, reaching into the future, reaching into the way God sees the world and we're bringing that into reality through prayer. Prayer is what materializes what is invisible. So this is our goal. This is what we're doing. So I want to know what is the overarching theme that will help me to see what's the name of the operation. I mean, like I know my role is, but what is, what is the total goal of everything? So what is God doing right now? So number one, we need to understand the difference between revelation, end of all things, judgments, and the grace that is still existing in this church age. We have to know the difference between those two. This is for a, another uh, podcast, but there is, a, there is sometimes a misconception between uh, seeing the four horses of the apocalypse approaching, the mark of the beast is coming. Everyone's talking about those things in the Antichrist. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Before there's an Antichrist, we have to remember, we're still in the era of Christ and the church. So let's fulfill everything that is God's will for us right now. What is God doing now? We can see what's coming with the tribulation. We know the winds of the tribulation are blowing, but what can we do about it? We don't want this fatalistic feeling that I grew up with hearing all the prophecy preachers you know, talking about the end times. It, it was scare tactics. It was manipulating our emotions. And after a while, it sounded like people were just crying wolf or the sky is falling. And we got tired of hearing it. And so people just kind of walked away from it. Now as we're seeing more of these prophetic things coming to pass in the 21st century, People have much more interest now in end times. Understand this. There is an end time church that is releasing the wisdom of God, the manifold wisdom of God, and explaining it to the spirit world. There are things that are hidden from ages and generations that are now being revealed. And he does it through the church. So if you really want to understand what's happening in the world, you have to get in the church, stay in the church, and flow in the stream of the destiny of the people of God. And then the rest of it will make sense to you. Paul told the Thessalonians, and of the times and the seasons, brethren, you are not ignorant. He said, you know the times and the seasons. And it's because they were already in the church, already flowing, already understanding. They were asking questions. They were getting more clarifications. God was giving them answers uh, because they were already in the right place, already hearing God and already doing his will. So what are the three strategic prayer initiatives? They are number one, visitation. Number two, transformation. And number three, multiplication. These three prayer initiatives are in existence until the coming of the Lord. In our next episodes, we will deal with each one of these uh, prayer initiatives. But I wanted to set it all up and give you a foundation so that we can all together collectively be praying for these overarching remas for the body of Christ and for the church. Thank you again for joining us. Thank you for being a part of Prayer Nation, and we'll see you next time.